We need to talk about the Fantastic Four movie. There's been a lot of information, rumors, leaks, and things coming out about the film, okay? And the fan reaction has been super mixed, okay? Not just about the female Silver Surfer, although that is a whole thing. I'm sure you've seen a thousand different clickbaity thumbnails and threads on Twitter and Reddit. Female Silver Surfer. Here we go. But it's not just female Silver Surfer. There's actually a ton of leaks and reveals about this movie that people are divided on. This is the riskiest movie Marvel has ever made. And in this video, I want to go over five different reasons why I believe that and why I think this could go one of two ways, either really, really well or really really poorly. But we might as well start with the female Silver Surfer and the idea of subverting expectation. I find the conversation around this to be so exhausting, and that's actually the reason I didn't want them to do it. it, it I don't, like, really care that much. I mean, frankly, as a fan, I want Norrin Rad. I think I understand why they're doing Shalabal, which we'll get into in just a second, but the, the bottom line is, man, when you say Silver Surfer, when you say Galactus, or when you say Batman, or when you say Superman, you are evoking an expectation. So when you say Silver Surfer, we expect Norrin Rad, and the fact that they are doing Shalabal subverts that expectation, okay? And you're going to have a lot of people frustrated about this. Yes, that does in some ways dip into like low-hanging fruit, culture war outrage, but there's also just... People like me that, number one, don't want that fucking conversation because it's, like, annoying and I'd rather just talk about the movie and the lore and the powers and the characters. But I also just like Norrin Rad, dude. Like, and it's so fucking stupid that I get out there and I'm like, yeah, no, I would have preferred Norrin Rad. And then people label me in all sorts of ways or try to put me in the bucket of isms or phobes because I just want Norrin Rad. Like, what's wrong with that? But the thing is, that's just the tip of the iceberg, ladies and gentlemen. That's only the beginning of the subversion of expectations that are going to happen with this movie. Because I think the reason that they are doing Shalabal as opposed to Norrin Rad is because they're going to destroy that universe. And therefore probably destroy Shalabal herself. The rumors that are out there say this is an entirely different universe and that universe will be destroyed. And if you look at this officially released art of Johnny Storm, you can see in the background, like you can see those buildings. That's from a different universe. That's a totally different, that's like some Jetsons shit. And the thing is, this leak has been out there for a while. I've been talking about it on streams and videos. You've probably seen other articles. I think it just got reposted by one of the scoopers because fucking rents do or some shit. But the weird thing is, every time this rumor comes up, you've got a bunch of people in denial. Like, I've seen the posts on Reddit. I've seen the Twitter threads. There's a lot of people that just don't accept it. And they're like, that would be absurd. I don't believe that they are doing that, but I think they're doing it. And I basically think right now with where the Marvel fandom's at, with where the brand of Marvel is at, it's a bold move to be so subverting of expectation with the most fundamental, old school, foundational Marvel property like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's, their work on the Fantastic Four kind of makes Marvel. Like, it makes it what it is. So, it's very traditional. You have certain expectations. Marvel is subverting those. But that's not all, because we have the numero two reason this movie's risky as hell, and that has to do with the cast. Man, I remember when the rumors of Pedro Pascal being Reed were out there. It was almost met universally with questions like a lot of people didn't like it they didn't see it they were like ah he's a little overexposed i see him in all these other roles and i just kind of don't see him as reed richards and then that silly internet thing happened where he was officially announced and a lot of people started kind of hating on the decision and then a lot of those same people that had originally been skeptical and were like i don't know about this shit kind of just went full sale like he is our reed richards he can do no wrong pedro's fantastic and he's going to crush it i feel like that happens on the internet like people will adjust their opinions based on the group of people they don't like and wanting to disagree with them that 
is fucking real. And the thing is, Marvel's kind of always done the opposite of this. They don't usually go for really big names for their characters. Like you could make the argument that RDJ was really famous, but he was on the outs, man. Like his career was in the twilight. He kind of been canceled. People didn't really think he'd be able to come back. And I know Jeremy Renner had won an Oscar and ScarJo was ScarJo, but you've got Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, and many other folks folks that were relatively unknown that come in. I think this actually has to do with Kevin Feige's love of Richard Donner and the original Superman movie. Because this was a thing in that Superman movie. They wanted an unknown for Superman. They didn't want to get like Burt Reynolds, one of the big names of the time, because they thought audiences would see Burt Reynolds. They wouldn't be able to see the character. And traditionally, that's what Marvel does. They go for character. That's the whole thing. But with the Fantastic Four, they changed that. And not only did they change it, like they were going for crazy big names. Like the rumors were Adam Driver was considered for Reed. Dev Patel was considered for Reed. You were going to maybe get Jake Gyllenhaal for Reed. And Margot Robbie, Barbie herself, who's like huge right now. She was apparently going to be Sue Storm. Now you have Vanessa Kirby, not as famous as Margot, but still very high profile that's a that's a big celebrity. And I'm just not sure why Marvel decided to do this. Again, you want to see the characters, and these characters are really important. So it's strange that they go with this A-list celebrity thing. And Pedro himself, guess what, guys? I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to, you know, get a bunch of fucking tiki torches. But I still just, I don't see Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards. I don't see it. I don't think it's good casting. And Pedro is everywhere he is literally doing the next star wars movie he's doing the biggest show on fucking hbo with the last of us he's he's everywhere dude he's very overexposed at the moment so it's just gonna be weird going in to see pedro pascal as reed richards vanessa kirby like that it's just gonna be weird okay it's just gonna be different and i think it's a risk it could work out it could be absolutely horrible and take me out of the movie almost immediately and now we've come to the letter three reason as to why this is the riskiest movie that marvel's ever made it has to do with the scale of this thing like Marvel's done some really big freaking crazy movies. I think maybe the most ambitious movie they've done so far is Endgame, maybe Infinity War, because Infinity War has so many different characters and it's juggling so much plot. But this movie is supposed to be set in a different universe, which they will have to completely make and design. It is apparently going to take place in multiple timelines, right? So you've got the past and the future, and you're gonna have different costumes, changes, all kinds of different things. So you have to develop both of those. The movie's tackling crazy concepts, the multiverse, the universe, Galactus, entropy, destiny, power, responsibility, all of that stuff is gonna be wrapped up in characters like Galactus, like the Silver Surfer, maybe other heralds, Reed himself, and then Franklin Richards, right? Because the rumor is Franklin Richards is going to be in this movie, and this is a kid that can literally create pocket dimensions under his blanket in his room. He is insanely powerful. He's also an Omega level mutant. And I know they retconned that in the Krakoa age. Fuck that. He's still an Omega level mutant to me. But maybe the most ambitious thing they're trying to do with this movie is establish a Fantastic Four that is supposed to be like the MCU's Fantastic Four. Like this is our read in our Sue, but they're going to start in a different universe. That universe is going to be destroyed and then they're going to show up in Secret Wars, and then they're going to also then be the Fantastic Four of the new MCU universe after Secret Wars. Like, I just got confused explaining it to you, but that's what they're trying to do. That's so fucking weird! So the movie has to juggle establishing the characters, establishing concepts of the multiverse and that collapse that's going to set up Secret Wars, and yet also make us like these characters so much that we'll accept them in the new universe, which will have everybody all together and look nothing like where they come from. And it's also supposed to be about family. Like you're, you're, you're doing a Vin Diesel here. This shit's about family. And, uh, I don't know, man. I'm getting, I'm getting shades of fucking quantum mania here. I'm, I'm trying not, I hope not, please don't. But also like, weren't they doing that? 
in Quantum Mania? Isn't that a family? Like they're trying to establish the family stuff in Quantum Mania, right? They're going into different universes and trying to explain the fabric of space, time, and the multiverse with with family at the set. Do you see what I mean? Please don't let this shit be Quantum Mania. What the fuck? And that takes me into the fourth reason that this is super risky, and that has to do with family. Because look, Quantum Mania is a good example of Marvel showing us a uh, well let's call it non-traditional family unit and again this kind of dips into that whole culture war thing i think it's so fucking annoying but it's also real like you can't deny it there's a lot of people that feel very strongly about family values and there's a lot of people that feel like disney specifically a company that used to really be about family values seemingly changing the way they now think and promote and talk about family values. It's incredibly risky to do a movie that is that important to family and a movie that's really about family in such a weird divided time, specifically for a company like Disney. And this could go a couple of different ways. Like they could make it really good, of course, really good and nuanced, but they could also make it really sterile. Like I could see Disney taking this approach of like, hey, this is, you know, too sensitive. This is too much here. We want to just Play it safe, make them love each other. Mom kisses dad goodbye, and that's pretty much it. So it could be very stale and uninteresting. It could promote one form of family, maybe a traditional one, and then you have all these people losing their mind, and then maybe you do a, a more modern version of a family, and you have a bunch of other people losing their minds. It's it's almost like a no-win scenario. Like I think a movie that did it really well was Avatar, but like Avatar's removed from modern world right it, it's that it's just family and because it's so fantasy and because there's so much uh like tribal things going on like literally being initiated into a new tribe we don't see how it relates to the real world but when it comes to the fantastic four and i think unfortunately if you look at what they did in quantum mini you could see a scenario in which marvel's trying to make some weird modern statement about family, family units, and how it all needs to change. And I, I just think that's such a weird, unnecessarily risky thing to do. All right, but my fifth and final reason as to why this is such a risky move has to do with the fact that there's going to be no other heroes in the Fantastic Four universe. This is a big rumor out there. Apparently, in this new world, you're you're just going to have the Fantastic Four. There's no Avengers. There's no X-Men. There's no Spider-Man. There's no other heroes. It's just the Fantastic Four. And that just feels so weird to me because the juice with the Fantastic Four is how they interact with other characters. Like, from the comics, that's the juice, man. Like, some of the best stuff has to do with how Reed relates to other characters. Like, after the Clone Saga, when Peter Parker's dying, this was in, like, the other arc where he gets, like, those weird powers, he goes to Reed Richards because he knows Reed Richards can figure out what's happening to him. And he does. And there's no way out. Reed basically has to tell Peter, you're dying and there's nothing we can do. And it's meaningful. It's dope. I mean, I think about Valeria. She's awesome, but she's really cool because of her relationship with Dr. Doom. Her and Dr. Doom, that's like magic. And Franklin's really cool, but Franklin and other characters, whether it's the X-Men trying to get him to go to Krakoa because he's actually a mutant, or his relationship with Galactus, who begins very worried about him and then ends up working with him. Johnny Storm and Spider-Man becoming roommates. Like, that's freaking awesome. That's a super fun part of their comic book history. Sue Storm and Namor. That's a really interesting situation. Ben Grimm and Hulk, Ben Grimm and Thor. Like, that's a kind of fun unit and a fun combination. Like, I remember when Johnny Storm dies in the comics, I believe it was Hulk and Thor. They come to Ben Grimm and they basically just let the thing just clobber them. And so they have like a sparring match, but they know they've got to let Ben just get it out. And that's cool. It's dope. It's a fun relationship between those characters like the fantastic four on their own that just feels like the old fox stuff like that doesn't really feel like the mcu again it's a little bit of subvertive expectations like when you think fantastic four in the mcu you think fantastic four with the mcu like many of us thought reed richards was going to pop up in wandavision we thought maybe reed richards had bought avengers tower and that would have been interesting it would have been really cool to see how the fantastic four 
is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. How does that work? Where have they been? What are they doing? What do they think of Thanos, the Avengers, Spider-Man, all of it? And instead, you're getting none of that. Like, that's not going to be in the movie. And I think that's a really risky situation, especially because you want these characters to be the Fantastic Four with all these other characters. And that's going to happen on Secret Wars. And then it's going to happen in this sort of soft rebooted MCU. That's like the rumor. That's that's the plan, right? But that's really weird. I would rather just have them in the MCU. Like, duh. And if you look online, you can see a lot of fans having these same conversations. Like, these are a lot of the same things that are bothering people, that are, that are getting people to question whether or not it's going to be good. And I think given Marvel's track record as of late and just where the fandom is at, this feels like an unnecessarily risky movie. Like, I don't understand why they're doing all this really weird, risky stuff. Like, the family thing, I get. I would argue there are ways to focus the story on other aspects than just the modern version of the family itself, but you still have to make family the thing when it comes to Fantastic Four. There's maybe ways to do that that are maybe less controversial, more controversial. We'll see what they end up doing, but there's just so much in this movie that's weird. I want to be happy with my Fantastic Four movie, and maybe I will be. Again, sometimes risks do pay off, but sometimes they uh, don't.